بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Privacy is a rare asset which the sale even though free is special so privacy is something you can sell there's no price to it by you being on these platforms without taking the precautionary measures means you are selling your privacy but it's something you can't buy back it is frozen in time it is frozen in data it is frozen in server warehouses and can be used, is being used and will be used against you. Whether it's for marketing, whether it's for advertising, whether whatever it is. In the olden days, we would have show and tell. You would go to school, have a project, show and tell. Now it's moved on a global level. So this is a world where everyone shows and tells everything. Everyone shows and tells everything. So the most valuable asset now is privacy and discretion. Because people are showing what they don't have as well. They making a show out of the show. To make money out of the show. So in Deen, we are encouraged to make the dua for Afiyah. اللهم إني أسألك العفو والعافية والمعافاة الدائمة في الدين والدنيا والآخرة. So after yaqeen, the best dua is the dua for afiyat. Having your information private and confidential, that ensures it is part and parcel of afiyat. Because in this privacy, there is afiyat, there is protection, there is preservation. So when you censor your life and it is not open, it is private, then there is afiyat in that. And because of technology and the ease of technology and the access to information, something which is in excess loses its value. When you have something in big quantities, you lose its value. Whereas something which is scarce becomes valuable and becomes sought off. So a person should enjoy their privacy because it is a mystery. And technology has removed the mystery out of life. So privacy, secrecy, it is imperative for a believer to be particular about this. Muawiyah radiallahu anhu used to say, مَا أَفْشَيْتُ سِرِّ إِلَىٰ أَحَدٍ إِلَّا أَعْقَبَنِي طُولُ النَّدْمِ That any secret which I revealed gave me perpetual grief and regret. So a person in those days would have a secret, preserve it. He's saying, I release certain information. Nowadays all, literally all, more than all, more than what you even know they know about you. Somebody said, Ma, whatever I, ma kunta katamahu min aduik, fala tadhar alayhi sadiqak. Whatever you hide from your enemy, hide it from your friends, from your closest. So trust is a very important word. 
ما أقبح بالإنسان أي خوف على ما في يده من اللسوس فيخفيه How come when it comes to thieves you hide your property, you hide your possessions, you hide your valuables but when it comes to something which is more important when you makkin adu wahu min nafsihi bi idharihi ma fi qalbihi min sirri nafsihi wa sirri akhi that's your own personal secret your brother's secrets you reveal it easily fala yalu man illa nafsu don't blame anybody blame yourself in this consequences so abu masud asked Abu Abdullah, ma sami'ta Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqulu fi zamu Did you hear anything from the Nabi of Allah saying with regards to za'ama, yani assertions? So he said, Bi'sa matiyyatu rajul Bi'sa matiyyatu rajul so, did you hear the Nabi of Allah say anything with regards to speculation, to conjecture, to assumptions? So he said, I heard the Messenger of Allah Wasallam saying, It is a bad riding beast for a man to say, Za'ama. I think so, I presume. Yeah, it's a guesstimate. So conjecture is destructive and nowadays with technology it is only about show how good a showman you are only about exposing faults of others only about exposing one's sins only about defaming others only about carrying tales only about backbiting so the lust is endless we should not get caught in this. So everything is it's 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 unverified, it's unconfirmed, it's it's hearsay. A rumor. So a believer does not get into the za'ama, something which is unsubstantiated. The rewrite of Umar of the Allah Iyakum wal fitan fa in lisana fiha mithlu. Waq is safe. Beware of tribulations. By that time, the tongue will be like the blow of a sword. The tongue will be like the blow of a sword. Nowadays, through WhatsApp text, Facebook texting, Instagram texting, these are texts which is the tongue. It's causing blows. So the information that has been relayed and what we portray in and what we send in. So we, we have to be very cautious. Sahaba made hijrat from Makkah al Mukarramah to Habsha. Word spread that they peace the Quraysh have uh, given them the opportunity and they can return to Makkah. They returned on this conjecture and there was consequences. The battle of Uhud when Hazrat Musa bin Umar became Shaheed and the rumor spread that Nabi alayhi became Shaheed. It caused tremor, shock waves. It was a rumor. Aisha radiallahu anha, the incident of Ifk, we again Rumors, fabrication. They were it was consequential. So technology, the systems, the uh, plotting, the planning of party, the people of Iman don't get caught. We are so caught in their systems, their traps we can't see through it. We think think we presume you are in control. No, they controlling you. Person is so entrenched, it's so deep rooted in this darkness. That they, they, their rule is embedded in it. They can't see beyond it. They can't see beyond it. 
a lawyer was approached by the devil, came with a proposition. What he said to the lawyer, I'll arrange for you to win every case, double or triple your money. You'll work half or quarter the amount of work. Make sure you get appointed as a Supreme Court bench at a very young age and you will live to be double that. What's the deal? Well, all you need to do is sell the soul of your parents, your wife, your three kids and yourself. So the lawyer thought about it and he said, okay, what's the catch? What's the catch? Sometimes we're so entrenched in a system, we think so, we, we, we presume the abnormal becomes normal, it becomes a routine. So all these flat platforms have deformed us, they've made us flat forms. As the Muratani Rahmatullahi explained in uh, once a lawyer once asked him in Karana, a town in India, why is five times Salat first? So Maulana replied, why is your nose on your face? So the man replied, it would have appeared ugly if it was on my neck. So Malatani said, never, if everyone's nose was at the back of the neck, it would seem unsightly. So the person kept quiet. So uh, evil has become so common, it's become the norm. I to say, if the power of the world had to collapse, the global grid crashed. Most of the fitness will cease. There'll be no fitness anymore. So the systems here have been engineered to destroy. Yes, we're saying it is used for certain purposes. It is beneficial, etc., etc., etc. But once a person crosses the line, that's where the danger starts. There was somebody from North California and he's seen ads popping up in front of his Yahoo mail. But it wasn't random ads, it was ads. Example, he was planning a trip to Dubai. You would see ad for Dubai. You would see airlines to the UAE. So he, he, he wondered and he did an investigation and he found out that the Yahoo account holders the contents of their email were being scanned and now there was targeted advertising. So this person and somebody else got together and they did more research and they found out that not only in Yahoo your internal mail has been scanned but everything that you're sending out and coming in. So all mail was intercepted not the ones located on the servers. So they file a class action, this was around 2012, against Yahoo. 275 million account holders for the concern of this illegal wiretapping. Did it stop? No, it still continues. So this, this, this class action Continued for three years, June 2015, go down the line, the judge ruled that they had sufficient grounds for their class action. And from the date of inception, which was 2011 of the filing, uh, this lawsuit would, would, uh, would uh, encompass everybody that were un in that jurisdiction. And it was a contravention of the invasion of the Privacy Act. But the case is still pending. They still scan in your emails. There was another email scanning lawsuit around 2014. So Google published information about its email scanning process in a court hearing. And they couldn't have that information redacted or removed. So complainants, petitioners in that USA Today were part of that. They found that um, this contravention and content was being abused. So all scanning of the Google server, the Gmail was taking place. 
Likewise, Microsoft uh, in, in, in Hotmail accounts once scanned access one of the employees accounts and uh, that, that, that what became public information. So since somebody is working for you, he, whatever he was doing, they, they needed information about his doings with regards to software and pirate copies, etc. They accessed his email. So, so it's not limited to your private email as well. A person working for a company, the IT department has access to that, to your emails. They have access to everything. They can choose the content which they want to see. Even the websites that you are browsing, etc, etc, etc. If they are smart enough, they can even access uh, files on your computer. So, this, this information that you may delete, it lives on, it's, it stays in their servers. So whether it's corporations, whether it's governments, whether it's predators, they intercept your email while it is in transit. So what should be done? What, what do I do now? I know this is a problem. So firstly, when mail email is sent, you have MTAs, mail transfer agents, which most of the time don't use encryption. Your message is open, it is vulnerable, and people have access to that. So, encryption, Caesar cipher, which uh, substitutes, it's a type of uh, cryptography, where the texts are encrypted, it's, it's a substituted by a cipher, and uh, encryption is the way to go. That's one option. There are a few options. There may be many more options by the time uh, every day technology is evolving. So we need to keep our eyes out. So these are some of the suggestions. So general email encryption uses technology is called uh, asymmetrical encryption. So it generates two keys, a private key which is on a device and a public key. So these two keys are interlinked and they related. So that uh, form of encryption now the person wants to encrypt the email one type of encryption is pgp which is pretty good privacy and this is developed by summon tech corporation phil zimmerman and you get the open source version which is open pgp which is a free version then the third option which is gpg privacy guard this is also free. So it protects a person's privacy, people that you communicate with, bulk surveillance systems, tools which uh, NSA can, they, they, they will use to uncover your private matters. This method of encryption may secure a person. But obviously when you go into encryption, you need to make sure that you don't just rely on one system. You need to have parallel systems. So one is you have your email encryption, end-to-end -end encryption. You have password managers, you have a PGB system, which is a conformance to all operating system. These have been running for many, many years as well. So there are elements out there that are out there to infiltrate your system. In 2015, when there were attacks in Paris as well, governments were trying to look for backdoors to decrypt encrypted email, phone messages. So uh, there is elements out there. So a person must make sure that uh, they, they take the precautions. Likewise, if there are any algorithms where they are cracked, so we have to be updated or seen, has the system been breached and is there patches which have, have um, circumvented these breaches and, and, and sorted out these patches.
So in person encrypts a message whether it's email, it's text, the phone call, it's called end-to-end -end encryption. And nobody can read it uh, unless they, they, they decrypt it, which makes it very difficult. You get decryption technology as well. But uh, it makes it difficult also. So uh, even in the browser, as a person is using a Firefox internet browser, then you get PGP plugins. So for example, Mailvelop, which is a, a German-based company, they are for uh, uh, encryption solutions. So these extensions, they give you end-to-end -end uh, encryption, even for your mail addresses, it encrypts your mails, your, your, your email provider, your data is uh, private. It is open source as well, so you know there's no hidden agendas. So these are all things which we need to implement and make sure we are protected and preserved. The Amal for today is that to read Salat on the time when it comes in. Alaykum bi dhikri rabbikum azza wa jalla. Be particular in engaging in the remembrance of your sustainer. Wasallu salatakum fi awwali waqtikum. And read Salat on the first opportunity when it just comes in. So ideally to be in the masjid before the Adhan goes. Fa inna Allah yudha'ifu lakum because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will multiply your rewards. So to be early to the masjid, don't delay when the time of salat comes in, when the mu'adhin gives the adhan. We shouldn't prepare for salah when adhan is going. We should be ready for salah before the adhan goes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq of understanding and make an amal wa akhiru da'awana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.